Okay, small update. This came in. It doesn't look too bad now because I've just power washed it. And I actually connected an extension cord to here, turned it over with the button, and it started. And it was, and it even started with the fuel turned off. This one's a nice one. It's got the uh, fuel on, fuel off button. But it's missing a rewind. And that rewind is $140 US from Jack's small engines. Now, I'm stunned. I tried one of these, but this is for the uh, Quantum. And the one that I need has a metal cup right about where my thumb is all the way around. It does almost catch on those nylon goobers. That's what they are. They're goobers. You see how the goobers stick out? But not quite. Most of his stuff comes in because with things like missing rewinds, I don't know what it is about contractors, but they love to move rewinds around from machine to machine. Probably because they're $140 US. So, don't know what I'm going to do there. He can't have just the AC start there. He's got to have something to turn it over with. I know I've seen Road King cut a notch in those and use a rope. But I can't make that happen because it'll get caught and tear the guy's arm off. Alright, so I just took this one off. Uh, this engine. It's almost the right one, but if you look, it, the cup is still inside the housing. If you look straight there, where the, this one over here, the cup is just extruded from the proud, I guess they would say, proud of the uh, assembly, and it's the same or similar Look at that, Briggs and Stratton's using Honda parts, right? You see that? Oh, let me just do that. You see that? It's almost identical. But this sticks proud a bit. And there's six holes in this one, and only three in this one. And I'll explain that right now. So if I put this one on here, we have two screws that use the existing reinforced holes there and there and then after that I tapped the other 1032 holes for the other four so this will not come off I don't think it'll it'll come off it'll be it has to be stronger than this one that has three over here that's going to go back onto here like that So let me just get these done up and we'll show you what we, we've come up with at the end. I just wanted to get that on film for you guys. Uh, it's really important because this is a hack you could potentially use. And by the way, I did put a thicker washer underneath that cup just to raise it up a little bit. It was just ratcheting on the edge of the top piece right there. But you get, you, I mean, I'm not paying $200 Canadian for a rewind. I'll work the hack and I'll help the customer. Well, I think you guys can look down from there. We got a rewind. Uh, it's drilled in all four spots. These two had welded nuts on the back and then I did a, I did a tap on the other four. So it's held in six places, not four. So down here now, we're just going to have a look in the guts of the snowblower. And this is where all the good stuff happens, guys. And you know what? There's very, very few hours on this thing. You can just tell already by looking. It's just, unfortunately, it's been left outside to sit. Let's just squeeze this, I believe, is the handle. And then all I do with these, if they don't spin... Oh, it does spin a bit, eh? Not bad though. Okay, so I'm going to grab a tiny bit of sandpaper and I'm going to clean that up. Alright. 
So right, right in there is, the, is what makes a snow blower go. This is the the drive wheel from the engine, and this is the drive cup rubber wheel to the wheel drive from that uh, gear to here and then around. See that? So there's really not much to it. They just take a tiny bit of oil. I like to use transmission fluid. Transmission fluid is a great, um, what do you call it? Let's change gears a little bit here first. Okay, get a little bit of, just the tiniest amount. You don't want to squirt oil like a crazy person here. And then a little bit on the gear. It'll drip and then we'll wipe it up. Good. It's actually not bad, you know. And then the last thing we do is to have a look at that uh, drive belt. Uh, where's the light, Luke? The bottom of this drive belt looks really good. We'll, we'll, we'll check that from top. And I'm just going to get some hydrocarbons and clean that uh, clean that wheel off, and we should be golden. That is cool. Machine's hardly been used. Pardon me. Change a few gears here. Now we'll see if I can turn this. Oh, we have to squeeze this handle. Nope. So that's it. A little tiny bit more uh, oil on some moving parts here. Let's see. What do we got? That's fine. Got a little bit of oil on the axles. There. Look at that. So what you want to do when you're doing something like this is you want to make sure there's no uh, there's no rubber in here from belt wear and there isn't. And then there's a drain hole here for moisture too, which is nice. It's actually pretty good, except I don't like the plastic. You know me, I don't like the plastic. Uh, where'd they go? Stay there. I don't like the plastic pad uh, splash guards. Because these always crack. And that's it, baby. This guy is, is inspected and got a new rewind. Can you still see after I bumped you? Now we're going to back this up and then I'm going to try and start this machine with the uh, pull rope. Now, I don't like doing that, but this is also a part I don't like doing. The weight lifting 135 pounds. Good. Alright. Let's turn the gas on. Turn the the throttle to full. This is full choke over here. Should bark. What am I missing? The prime.
So once you're at this point, pardon me, once you're at this point, you're at the tune-up spot, eh? Where does this thing go? No, I don't know. Probably right there. I think there. I don't know. friends so now that's a working machine love red so thanks for watching oh hello my friends well we got a little more work to do I just used him out here and my first pass I didn't have the scraper blade touching the concrete or just above the concrete I thought I did and now it's already frozen down like a like a hockey rink So my next thing, I tried spinning those uh, skids around, and it made the it made the snowblower too high. So I lowered them, I turned them back so that the worn side was down, which is wrong, because we're going to wear out the tines there. So a little more work to do. I do have a spare pair of those, but I can also uh, turn them and use smaller washers so I get more depth. And also maybe lower the uh, lower the scraper blade. Now let's have a quick look at that if we can. Can you guys see down there maybe? Oh. I don't think there's any play left in that scraper blade. But we're wearing out the tines, so we don't want to do that either. I don't know if I can get those off or not. Maybe if they're half inch or seven sixteenths. inside me right now. Uh, never stick anything in there. Check in the welding rack right now and see what I got. There's a couple of pretty cool things here. I found a new choke. Can you believe it? I found that in my stuff. I must have parted out a Snow King at one point, eh? And then this lifts off. And that falls off too. But this is what, on every Snow King I've ever worked on, this heats up and cracks right there. Do you see that? So I've got this just sitting across there like that before I bolt down the cover. I know it's a little primitive, but you do what you gotta do. I'm trying to get out the spark plug right there. Okay, now this should be interesting. I have not had the spark plug out yet. Let's get a uh, 5 8 narrow, narrow gauge. Can you guys see right down into here? I think you can, hey, right here. 
Let's just make sure. Ding, 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 ding. Ooh, that muffler's hot, eh? Okay? Ouch. Cut myself. Good. No damage. It's probably an RJ12YC. Feels like it. Long threaded plug, narrow end. Oh, she's pretty bad, man. I think if I have one, I'm going to stick in a new one. Right there. But it works, you know. Oh, BKR5ES. Okay, I'm going to mention this one more time. I've added this piece of steel across here because these mufflers always crack. I just changed the spark plug. It used to be an NGK BP5RES and then I, I put in a, an RJ12YC. Both are 5 8 head on the plug. So now I'm just going to see if I can get this together without, without uh, causing myself too much stress. Everything's balanced on that little new bracket sitting in there. There we are. Oh, 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 oh. Good catch, buckle boy. Now this little guy is the key right here. Tools are amazing. When I started this 10 years ago, I had nothing. Good. Now, there's another there's another thread I gotta put in here, right over here. It's got its own mind as well, right? One more. Good. And then our choke. doesn't want to fit very good, does it? I can glue it on, though. It's probably because it's been lifted a tiny bit. I wonder if I can bend it down. Good. So that's choke on. A little bit of prime. Gas is on. Let's just see if she barks. Oh, the only thing I never did check was the RPMs, and it's going to stay just like it is. Perfect. Okay, so all that's left now is the skid plate. Holy, eh? Did you guys get a look at that or are you just looking at Mrs. P's car? Thanks.